All right, peace to the family, peace to the tribe, peace to the New Life Tools tribe, peace to the TP tribe, the Watsonary Nation. This is your brother, brother Yosef, and I am back with another video. So, as promised, family, I told you guys I would do another video before the, the week was out on something I think you guys would like to hear. And in this video here, family, we're going to talk about cremation versus being buried. The science of being cremated versus the science of being buried, okay? Now, to start this conversation out, family, we got to talk about some things that people may not see as positive, which is death, okay? So if you have a negative mindset, this video ain't really for you. Because you may not really get what I'm trying to say, okay? But if you pay attention to what I'm saying, you will understand that what I'm saying is true. It's very true, okay? So, before we get into the cremation and the burial part, which is very simple to understand, I want to get you guys to understand something about the life that you live. I want, to get, I want you guys to understand something about what you're experiencing right now. And the first thing I want you to understand is Death is a transformation process, family. Okay? Death is not something that happens to you in a moment because somebody cut in front of you and you died in a car accident. Or you was in the streets and somebody shot you. Or, you know, um, you got sick, you know, you got sick all of a sudden and just died. No. Death is a transformation process and it's always creeping up on you. And out of anything that's going to happen to you in this world, one thing is for sure is you're going to die one day. That's a fact. And everybody knows that. So you should be preparing yourself to live your life to the fullest because that's really what death is about. Preparing for death is about living your life to the fullest. And I'm jumping ahead of myself. But I wanted you guys to understand, first of all, that death is a process. It happens over time. So even if you do get in a car accident, it ain't something energy that you picked up in the last week. It's the energy you've been picking up over time until the energy of death was able to, able to take you. That's something you guys got to understand. So nobody just dies like that. It's based on, you can call it karma, okay? But it's based on energy that you build up over time that eventually takes you out of here, okay? That's what it is. It's a transformation process. And once it happens to you, family, you're still not dead. It's a whole process to dying. It's a whole pre process to death. Okay, so I want you guys to understand that because your soul cannot go. Your body dies, but your soul cannot go. Okay, so I want you guys to really, really understand that. All right. Now, this is something that you guys really got to understand because you're actually experiencing life while you're dying. Right. And that's simple to understand because every from the day you come out of your mother's womb, you're on the verge of you're eventually going to die. So you're dying every day as you come out of the womb. That's a fact. So you're not getting younger anymore you're getting older and we all know the older you get eventually everybody meets their death and it doesn't have to be anything negative we live in a world where especially because of christianity and religion we think that man i'm scared of death because if i'm not ready then i can go to hell or heaven <laughs> a lot of people think that but people are only scared of death because they're they're they're, they're uh they're not ready for death they haven't lived enough right they haven't experienced life because life can only be experienced in a realm of death. You live in a realm of death. The material world. The physical world is death. Right? It is death. It is destruction. It is not something that lasts forever. It decays over time. So you live in a realm of low vibratory energy. And everything down here dies one day. Trees, plants, and everything fades away. Everything with a consciousness down here, the form of it fades away in the physical form. It fades away. So you are in the realm of death. You need to understand that, family. You can call it a hell state. You can call it whatever you want, but that's what you are. You want to run with death. So while you're here, you need to learn the lessons. Remember, life, life is not a lesson. It's a, life is not a blessing. It's a lesson. Learn the lesson, lift the curse. So if you only experience life down here in the realm of death, then life can hurt you, family. Okay? Life can hurt you. So you need to learn how to live while you're down here because you're dying. Everybody's dying. The question is, how much have you lived? So life can only be experienced on the third dimension. It can only be experienced on the third dimension through death. Okay? Because you're dying and you're trying to live. So what I mean by trying to live is a lot of people think that they're living because they go to the club every weekend. Or they go to the bar. That's not living, family. You're just having fun. Living is not always about having fun. It's about having experiences. 
So you have to ask yourself a question. Are you having fun in your life? Or are you having experiences? Some experiences you have are not, are, are scary, right? Some experiences you have are scary, but it made you, like you may learn how to swim for the first time. It may not be fun at first because you're scared you're going to drown, but it's an experience. And that experience is a tool that you can learn that can take you through life. You can learn how to swim, right? You may want to jump out of an airplane. It may be exciting, right? But it's also dangerous. But at the same time, it's living. So I'm not saying don't have fun. I'm saying that don't make your life based on fun, right? Starting a business is an experience and it's scary, right? A lot of people are afraid to start their businesses. A lot of people are afraid to step out into the world, but that's a part of living. And you can only experience that while you're dying. So starting a job, starting a business is not fun. It can be scary. Now it's coming up with ideas are fun, but when you're actually doing it, so say you start a real estate business and you're trying to buy so many properties a month, it can be scary because what if you don't meet that quota? What if you don't buy prop that many properties every month? What if you start a food stand and nobody shows up? Some businesses fail. That's a fact. So starting a business can be scary, but it's a part of the experience of life. So that's what I mean by life is not always fun, family, but it should be experienced. And we live in a world where it can only be experienced through death, okay? Through the physical world, which is death that we live in, okay? So <clears throat> you have to learn how to experience life and understand that it's a death process, family, okay? Um, I had to write some notes down because I keep forgetting what I'm going to say a lot of time, all right? So, <clears throat> so family, um, I want you guys to understand this. Life is uncontrolled chaos. It is chaos that can't be controlled. That's what life is, right? But you learn how to control life by understanding death and by preparing for death. You control life. Life is uncontrolled chaos. It is suffering. You can suffer. People kill themselves because they life hard, right? People kill themselves because they say their life is hard. Life can be suffering for a lot of people. You can struggle financially. You can struggle with your health, right? You can struggle, struggle, struggle in so many different ways in life, right? So you need to understand, family, that once you understand that you're not going to be here forever, you'll take life more serious. You'll take life more serious. So that's what I mean by going back to that. If you learn how to about death, you will actually learn what life is because life is a part of death. Life is, life is an experience that we have while we're dying. Right? You're asleep right now. You're, when you're in the physical world, you're asleep. It's a state of death. Right? It's a state of death. So you have to understand that, family. You are not at your full potential because your consciousness is sleeping. You're trying to wake your consciousness up in a lower vibration. So I want you guys to understand that. So by starting a business for your family, leaving generational wealth, um, um, making yourself have a good name in this world, you are preparing for death. You are making sure the next generation is set because you know one day you're gonna leave here, so you go hard every day, right? You have fun along the way, you have some experiences along the way, but more importantly is you focus on your business. You focus on your business because you know you gotta leave something behind for the next generation. And I'm gonna tell you like this, even if you don't have children, leave something for your nieces and nephews. Try your best to leave a legacy, right? Because that's all part of the death process. Um, I say this all the time, I was, and I'll tell it again, I, I didn't really experience life until my daughter was born. I thought I was experiencing life, but when she was born, my world came down crashing because I started to realize I got to prepare myself for death because if I die today, I have nothing to leave this girl, right? So I started the process of studying business, studying law, studying life in general. I started to have more experience. I started taking my daughter on different experiences so she could remember things, right? Having her, you know, having her see different things because I know I'm not going to be here forever and she still has to have experiences in her life. And I want to teach her how to experience life. Her life is her own. But I want to teach her the same thing, baby girl. While you going through life, you got to understand, have experiences so you can learn. Because that's what you're here to do. You're here to learn the lesson. But at the same time, understand and leave something behind for the next generation. Leave some generational wealth or something for the next generation because you're going to die one day. We're all going to go. Right? And we have to understand that. And once you understand that, family, it'll make you live more. So this is why a lot of young people are immature. Because they, they're they young, they don't really think about leaving this planet. But when you have something to 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 uh, live for, it's different. So it's like Martin Luther King said, a man who has not found something to die for. I believe it was Martin Luther King that said this. 
A man who has not found something to die for is not fit to live. I'll say that again. A man who has not found something to die for is not fit to live. Right? And what's that uh, thing that Brother Bobby said years ago? He said, I think he said Leonardo da Vinci was on his deathbed. And he said, all my life I've been learning how to live. I should have been learning how to die. What does that mean? That means he should have been preparing for the day of his death. There's nothing to be afraid of when it comes to death. But if you ain't ready, and a lot of people, when they pass away, they regret what they didn't do on the physical world. So have experiences. Have fun, but don't base your life on fun. Have experiences. Some experiences could be fun, but some experiences can be, can be scary. The scary experiences will grow you. You will grow. Okay? And that's something you need to do. And that's something you're here to do. We need to challenge ourselves, family. Okay? That's so important. Because it's funny because when you live, you can suffer. Right? But when you die, what do they say? Rest in peace. So, to some degree, there's a peace around death that people have in their mind. But at the same time, people are afraid to die. You know, I, I did a video on my Patreon a while ago uh, based on the Steven Seagal movie, Mark for Death. And I, the title of the video was Everybody Want to Go to Heaven, but not, Nobody Want Dead. Y'all remember that part, right? <laughs> Everybody Want to Go to Heaven, but Nobody Want Dead. Right? That was so funny. That's my favorite part of that movie. Because that was so true. That was so true, meaning that Everybody want to have a good time and, 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 and be in the heavenly state, but you got to die to get there. Nobody want to die, right? Nobody want to die to experience heaven because people are afraid, okay? So <clears throat> after the body dies, family, after you do experience death, which is in the process, the body still goes through a process of leaving the earth, okay? When you pass away, family, you don't leave the earth immediately. Nobody does. Unless you have like a fifth dimensional body where you can just go to another dimension. But for the most part, 99% of the people on this planet, when they die, they linger around earth for a couple days. Okay, they may disappear and then reappear somewhere else. And disappear and reappear somewhere else. That's usually what happens, right? Now, some people with a low consciousness, they just remember waking up in the other side. And they don't remember walking to earth for like a couple days after they pass away. That's actually what happens to a lot of people. So this is why when people die, they'll actually go to their funeral. That's right. There'll actually be people who will actually try to grab their relatives and grab their family members at funerals because they don't understand fully what's going on. Right? They got in a car accident and they died like that and their, their spirit was knocked out of their body. They died so fast. A lot of times people who pass away like that, they don't even know they died. So when they walk, somebody walked up behind them and shot them in the head, they don't even know they died. So they're confused a lot of times. So they'll be trying to grab, I've seen this stuff. They'll be at funeral homes, even at hospitals. I used to work in a hospital and I've seen people die on the table and they'll be trying to console their mother, they'll grab their wife. They'll be trying to do this stuff and it don't work. And then they'll disappear. I'll see them do something and then they'll fade away, right? And then sometimes they, they don't understand that they're putting more pressure and sadness on the family because they're trying to linger around. And sometimes the family members can feel them. Like I can feel you, dad. I can feel you, grandpa. Grandma, I can feel you around me, right? And they and these people don't know because most most of our people haven't really practiced spirituality like that. They don't know that they should go on. You're hurting your family by lingering around, making them feel like you're still around them. You need to go on, you know, and 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 uh, you know, let this let this death process continue. So a lot of times they'll see the light, just like in the movie Ghost, and they'll just walk away from it. Once again, they regret, right? They didn't leave anything behind. They'll see their family suffering and struggling with money, trying to pay for the funeral. They don't have nothing. So they hate that and they, they be trying to console their family. Well, it's too late now, right? It's too late. And family, this is why rites and rituals should be done over the body um, or even after the body's gone, but really before the body. Some people do it after, but before the body is gone, the rites and rituals should be done if you're going to bury the body. Now, here we're here we going to bury and cremation. I don't recommend people being buried. Okay? At one time, I wanted to be buried because I didn't want my body to be burned up. But once I understood the science of it, plus I'm gone already, right? Once I understood the science of it, it's actually better to be cremated, family. Okay? It's better to be cremated. And I'm going to go into that. I'm going to tell you why. Um, If you don't do the correct death rites over a body when they're buried... A lot of the body can slowly decay and the person will literally walk around 
in a spirit world, the astral plane, for hundreds of years before they become conscious. That's right. They can walk around for hundreds of years, a hundred to a few hundred years, depending on how fast their body decays, and they can become, you know, conscious. I mean, excuse me, and they won't be conscious, right? They'll be walking around the astral plane like zombies. I know, I see it all the time to this day. There's people just walking around, just like, they don't know where they are. They walk in the days. That's because their 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 body's not fully gone. Their body's not fully decayed. So sometimes they can come back to earth, back and forth to earth. And that's not good. You don't want ghosts walking around. Right? You don't want that. So this is why cremation is buried, because it will allow that spirit to go directly to where it needs to go in the astral plane. And it can stay there. Right? It can stay there, family. And also it allows a person to wake up faster when they pass away. OK, so the person will actually wake up consciously and know they're in the astral plane when um, their the body's cremated and it gets rid of all the, the energies left over in the body after death. Sometimes that happens. There's a lot of negative energies that's left over in the physical body after a person dies. Right. So you're burning all that stuff up when you cremate it. I recommend people being cremated over buried. Um it's just the best thing to do, family. Um, and I know um, that we live in a world where the majority of our ancestors have been buried for the most part. But tr trust me, family, if you're when you pass away, you should have it in your will or something that you want to be cremated, right? Now, if your family is being buried, um, I recommend that you definitely set them up on the ancestor altar and start giving them energy and light and giving them food and water and stuff like that. Because they're going to need something. The more energy they receive, the more they can wake up faster. And they can know where they are. And I'm telling y'all, that's almost everybody that passed away that is not spiritual. They literally be walking around in the days in the astral plane. They just will be walking around. And they can be taken advantage of. They can be taken advantage of. So help your family. Um, Out of all the cultures in the world, African Americans, even Africans honor their ancestors in Africa. Native Americans honor their ancestors, but black people in America are afraid to do with anything like that. We believe in Jesus is going to take care of it. Jesus is going to take care of it or, or Allah is going to take care of it. We need to honor our ancestors. We need to do the thing that we used to do in the past. We need to feed our ancestors to help them on the other side. They need it. So burn you some ancestor money. Um, make some food for them. Uh, light a white candle. Talk to them and help them wake up. So they can know, and also the more energy they receive, the younger they'll look. So say they die with an injury to like their head or something, right? Well, the, the wound would actually heal. Their astral body will actually heal the wound and they won't look like that no more. They'll actually start to look younger. Okay, so feed your family. Um, even if they were cremated, you can still do the ancestral, you know, you don't have to put the urn up there. Um, you don't have to put the urn up there, family. Um, you can actually just, you know, put their picture up there because their body's in the astral plane. So you can do the same thing. I do, I do get that question sometimes. People wonder if their family is cremated. Can they still? I won't recommend putting the urn up there, but I do recommend. Um, you can if you want to, but but that person, that could be, yeah. I don't recommend putting the urn up there. I do recommend just putting their picture up there. You keep the urn somewhere else. Don't put it on the ancestor altar, though. Keep the urn somewhere else. I recommend you focusing on their spirit, right? Not the ashes of their body, but their spirit. And... Feeding them ancestors, you know, ancestor money, food, water, everything they need, whatever they like. That's what I recommend, family. So, if you bury a person, you must do the correct rites and death death rites and rituals to prepare that body. So, and the reason why it uh, th those things happen, so the body can actually be safe. Believe it or not, even after death, there are spirits and energies that come and suck up energy from the body. That's a right. That's a fact. So you have to protect that body so it can be protected even after death because if it's just rotting away in the ground, they're walking around the astral plane and demons and everything can take advantage of these people. That's a fact. So they're, they're being buried in Jesus' name and they're not protected. Your family. But if you put them on an ancestor altar and start feeding them energy and you ask the deities to protect them like Baron Samdi or something like that, Anubis and stuff like that, they will protect those people and they will help those people. Okay? So I want to be very clear on that. If they're buried, um, they're not protected spiritually. And so that's why they need to be on the ancestor altar because they can literally be, um, and they can be hurt. I told y'all about a family member of mine 
um, in one of my videos who, when I saw them there in the lower hell state and an uh, entity came out of the ground, you guys can go back and watch this video. I remember, I didn't have so many videos. I remember which video I talked about it in. But in the video, I talked about how a relative of mine was in a lower hell state. I went to go help them out and get them out of there. And I saw an entity come out of the ground with a Santa Claus sled. He had a sled and in it, in the sled was body parts. And also like people, like looking in the cage. And they was like, you know, get me out, help me, you know, saying all kind of crazy stuff like that. And the entity looked at me and I grabbed my family member and I just said, this, you know, this one's mine. And the entity just kept going. And it was like some kind of zombie looking entities like pulling the sled. It was the most creepiest, weirdest thing ever, right? So I was able to help my family member get out of that because they had a low conscience, not because they was a bad person. Their consciousness was low. And sometimes when you have a low consciousness, that's, that's what happens, right? So yes, family, when you bury your family, they can be, they're, they're, they're walking around in the days. They can be taken advantage of. They're not awake yet, right? But when you... When you're and, and so put them on the ancestor altar, right? But when they're cremated, they can wake up immediately and they can know where they are, they can protect themselves a lot better, but they still need to go on the ancestor altar. All right. So I just wanted to go in here and say that to you guys. So you guys need an understanding about that because I thought it was a good topic. I thought it was something very good to talk about, but I had to talk about death first and uh, help you understand life. So you can understand death is a continuous process, right? Every time you elevate, it's only because you died in the other realm. Right. Death is a transformation process. It transforms. Right. So when you're going through a death thing, you're transforming. You're supposed to be transforming for the better, not for the worst. So death is a is a, is a process that you're supposed to be transformed. That Pluto energy. Right. It's supposed to transform you for the better. That's what it is, family. But we have a tendency in America to look at death as something negative. You guys need to read the Tibetan Book of the Dead, the Egyptian Book of the Dead and all these other things. Right. You need to understand what death really is because death is not something that's bad. But if you're not prepared, it can be bad. So we're doing our spiritual work. We're trying to evolve. We're doing these things so we can be prepared for death. I tell you guys all the time, if you're doing magic, it ain't about spells. Spells is a tool you use to uh, hack into the matrix and change this reality to, to, to your reality. But please don't do magic based on spells. Do some evolutionary magic. Do some magic that's going to evolve you and help you and your family grow, okay? Especially yourself, because you can't really help your family, but help yourself. But hopefully you left a legacy behind if your family wants to follow spiritually, okay? Don't worry about telling them. Just live it in front of them. Live the spiritual life in front of them. Stop trying to tell your family about spirituality. They don't, they don't care. They don't want to listen. They're not ready for it. Just live it in front of them, and they'll respect it, okay? They'll respect the family. So this is Brother Yosef. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll highlight you guys in the next video. Peace, family.